La da da la da 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 do 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 It's time to it's time to relook at Webflow. Um, I've had students ask me, "Hey, can I just use Webflow to do I have to learn front end? Can I just use this Webflow thing?" And there's always been a couple of things about Webflow that bothered me. Um, one, the first time I looked at it, it didn't have a CMS. Um, it was just kind of like, hey, move some shapes around and now poof, you have a website. It reminded me a little too much of uh, iWeb. And uh, iWeb obviously went away. There was no, there was no real value to a, a product like iWeb. Um, it wasn't uh, cross-platform compatible. It, it had some real issues. Uh, so I, I had that iWeb spidey sense uh, tingle go off when I saw Webflow for the first time. And that minus the, minus the CMS, it was just kind of like a single page thing. Um, and, and I might add that um, I, I wasn't sure what their financial situation was. Why invest a lot of time learning a tool that could be gone tomorrow? And a story came out recently that kind of backed up that that feeling. No code website builder went from near bankruptcy to seven a seventy two million dollar Series A funding round. So that was interesting. That that little tingle that said, I don't know if they're going to be around. Uh, it looks like it was pretty close. They went from near bankruptcy, which means, you know, the people that had invested time learning this tool could have been just like, well, sorry, it didn't work out. But now they raised $72 million. I get the feeling that this tool is going to be around for a while. And it has a very robust CMS now. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would I be interested in a robust CMS from a from a, a site generator, which is basically what Webflow is. It helps you build websites. Well, there's a particular usage for that. And it comes down to situations where you're working with a client and you need to hand this thing off to them. If, if, if a client doesn't have an ongoing contract with you and you build something for them and it has a CMS, you're undoubtedly going to be approached later for updates or fixes or I just need this one little thing, something broke. Can you take a few seconds and I don't really want to pay for this because, you know, I've already paid for it, but I need this one little thing. And it's this constant back and forth. Are we under contract? Aren't we under contract? What is our relationship here? It's friction. And honestly, there's a lot of projects that once you're done with it, you just kind of want to be able to walk away from it. Um, you know, hey, I did that two years ago. I have I, I have a specific instance where I did a website for somebody, gosh, four years ago now. I will still get the occasional email. Oh, this carousel and this WordPress plugin thing that we asked you to put in, it needs to be updated now. Is there any, is there anything you can do? Is there somebody we could, could, do you have any instructions? I get those emails still. And it's part of that is improper boundary setting with the client. You walk away, they need to be able to service this. But another thing is just having a tool that makes it really easy for them to service it. And that's where Webflow comes back into the conversation. It is not a replacement for learning how to do front-end development work, but it is a valuable tool, or I believe it has become a valuable tool in allowing you to work with clients, hand that site off and be free and clear of subsequent work it's on them whatever they want to do with it is fine but it gets rid of all the little things that could happen along the way so today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at webflow and 
I am going to specifically, we're going to get rid of this Forbes story. Congratulations to the folks from Webflow, by the way. No hate. No hate. I, I, you know, I, I explained it, I believe very clearly why I was not willing to jump on the bandwagon, but here we are. And as you can see, I've been, I've been testing out. If I opened the designer, this is by the way, is the Webflow dashboard. If I opened the designer, you would see that I've like played around the CMS and that's because I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm not going to open this thing up for the first time with you and waste your time going through it. What I am curious though, what I'm curious about is after running through this, after working with it and building around with it for a couple of days, how much can I retain in, in, in the process of moving forward and how much am I how much am I frustrated by the differences between doing pure front-end web development and doing this assisted front-end web development with Webflow? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow all of the work that I did away. And yes, it you know this is kind of nice. This is kind of a, a little GitHub GitHub styled feature here. This confirmation. Hey, you got to type that in. You can just copy paste it if you want. I'm going to delete that forever and poof. I do love the little trolley guy. Um, the blue button up here must be important because it leads you right there. Actually, I loved it so much that I put it into the curriculum for um, a new pragmatic as kind of an explanation of what you should do in empty states. You should help people out. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and hit new project. And right away, you can see that there's a number of templates available to you. You can create, you can create a lot of stuff really quickly. This is very similar to what you would do with WordPress. I, I always find these things to be frankly a little frustrating because it's it's like it it's like working with somebody else's code. Um, if I have a chance to start from scratch with something, I'm going to start from scratch with something so that I know how it's made. I will spend more time trying to figure out how these presets are made than I would if I just started with a blank canvas. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a blank canvas, and this is not a sublime. Uh, this is not a sublime project. That's a that's like a text editor. Um, so I'm going to call this just. Uh, C I'm going to call it CMS2, because this is my second run through the CMS process. And when Webflow loads, by the way, this just loads right in the browser, which means, a, hey, that's fantastic. B holy crap what if i'm on a flight and i want to be doing some work it's it's online uh so now we're getting into the realm of what happens with uh what happens with figma um i will test this out though i'm taking a flight um uh, in a couple of days and i will test this out on a flight like with no connection and i'll just see if it like freaks out um but that said what i want to do now is i want to kind of get you acclimated to to the uh, to the can to the uh, project, so over here you have you have a couple of toolbars. Uh, this navigator is really handy. You can expand it. You can make it smaller. Um, it is connected with this right here. If you you can cl uh, click that again, it makes it go away. Up here you can add elements. Here is how you get back to that dashboard. Um, there's also project settings, um, which I have not do dove into extensively. Um, here's where you uh, actually create your pages. So like your homepage, your 404s, your collections, which is what, where we're gonna spend a lot of time. Database. Now the database is a CMS. It says CMS, but it's a database icon. Um, that's where we are gonna spend the majority of our time. There is an e-commerce tab uh, that I have not uh, investigated at all at this point because I am a media nerd, not a shopping site nerd. Um, uh, assets and your settings. And then down here is a couple of interesting things that I think are helpful. One is the grid. You can add a grid right away, and this is really helpful from a designer design perspective. There's also like an X-ray vision, so you get to create the outlines uh, really easily. This will throw you off if it's selected on. You'll think all your all your images are black and white, uh, as I've already done. And uh, this is zoom and. Uh, th this gets you right to the video tutorials. They do have a robust video tutorial series, but you have to be thinking about what it is that you're wanting to do 
it, it's very it, it's it's not like you need to consume the whole series to get started and that's really where having a prior understanding of front-end development comes in handy it's like oh well, i need to do x and then you can search for that pr particular video otherwise you're just kind of swimming through content um, it, it would be like visiting Stack Overflow, except Stack Overflow, I can just grab a snippet of code and slap it in. Um, up here, this is uh, this is how you change the uh, canvas size, uh, so you can your viewports will change. The interesting thing here is if you if you begin working, let's say here on the mobile mobile site, and then you come over here and you make some changes on the desktop site it will retain the change as much as if you were writing media queries from one. Uh, so here it'd be media queries for a desktop, there's a, a tablet, there's a phone. Um, there is a way to kick that code out. You have to have a, you have to upgrade to get a copy of your code, um, but you can get it. Uh, the code is, you know, it's okay. It's okay, it, it, it adds a lot of, um, a lot of divs, a lot of container two, container three, container four sort of things. Um, but I do think that there are ways that you can optimize your, your way around that. Um, up here is a preview mode. So if you want to, to see this in full screen mode, that's the way you would do that. And then you can obviously publish your project and you can get a, 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 a domain here or you can attach a domain. The attachment of a dom domain would Require an upgrade. Here is um, style. This is uh, all the in-depth settings for the particular element you happen to be on. These are um, the style manager, and this is interactions. But before you can do really anything with any site that you ever work on, you're going to need content. And this is a spot where I think Webflow just really does a great job. By comparison to building something on your own, uh, Webflow does a really fantastic job of giving giving you all the starting elements. So let's come back over here to the CMS and let's get this thing underway. So you know, lots of helper text here to tell you exactly what to do. Create your first collection here. That's where we're at. And now we are into a a, a it it is the same panel, but it looks completely different because the canvas is gone. You can create a collection, um, and a collection is basically we're, we're creating a database. You know, it's it's going to look a lot like a spreadsheet when this thing populates. Um, specifically, I'm going to create two types of, of collections. I'm going to create a blog post collections, and then I'm going to come back and create an author's collection. And the reason I'm going to do this is in mo when we're anytime you have multiple writers you have a situation where the blog posts are going to be created by a group of different people and you want to be able to go and look at the other things that were authored by that person this is pretty straightforward but you have to be thinking about oh what are the things that are always present in a blog post what are the, and one of those would be authors um, it would be very easy to simply add an author's field two blog posts but you'll see you'll see what I'm gonna do here in just a second so I'm gonna create a, a pull up a collection template called blog post um, so the collection name is this it gives you the plural and singular uh, the URL it would be post so it's post slash whatever that thing is and here are the fields and if you wanted to add a field it you could do it here you could do it here I want to add a reference field. However, I will not be able to add a reference field. This is a chicken and egg moment. And it was a little frustrating. I want to add a reference field to an author's collection, but you have to create the author's collection first before you can come back and add that reference field. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and skip adding that at the moment. And we will go ahead and come up to, I can't, hit create collection oh I have to hit cancel first um, so now I can create the collection and I just want to make sure I've got everything I need I got name body post summary main image thumbnail image featured color let's add one field let's add video so the um, I'll just call this video you, you do need to name it um, we'll go ahead and I could say it's 
a required field or not, but I'm just going to save it. And now we'll create the collection. Now this is where it gets pretty cool, I think, in that nothing's in the collection. So there's nothing to really work with. You'd have to you would have to go through and manually add a bunch of stuff to get this collection up and running. Or you have to import, uh, and you can import information. Like if you uh, if you output a CSV from WordPress or something, you could you could use the import function here. I like just creating some dummy text so we can get just right up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and say add 10 items, and it's going to take a second to kind of burp that out. And now we have 10 items. These have been uh, these are staged. As you click into each item, you can see what is actually there. And what it pulls through is it gives you a headline, it gives you a body post, it gives you a post summary, here's the main image. Uh, you can, re uh, you can uh, replace that image if you would like with something else. I'm going to skip over that for the moment. Gives you a color. I'm not necessarily sure what the color is all that valuable for. Um, and then it gives you a link to a video. So that's all great. We're gonna go ahead and save that. Actually, I'll just cancel because I didn't change anything. But, but if you remember, I wanted to connect an author with each of these. So to do that, I'm going to come back over and create a author's collection. And down here, I have got the name, the bio, the bio summary, the picture, email, Twitter profile, Facebook profile. I'm not really sure what other things I could add here. I guess I could add a file. I could, I could make this. Um, I could make this reference to a particular uh, story if I wanted to. But there's another way I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit cancel, and I'll save this. So we'll say create collection again. I am going to need a number of authors to work with, and rather than immediately having to create those from scratch. I'm just gonna say add 10 items. And poof, there we are. We have August and Sierra and Katie and Ida and Alan. So there you are. So there, the, the, you know, let's go ahead and look at this one. So the bio for the person's here, there's the name. You can see they inc include a picture, the bio summary. It's everything that you need. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. So now we have our authors and we have our, our blog post, but we need to come back over to blog post and we need to edit the, the collection because we need an author field in this blog post. So I'm going to add a field and I'm going to make a reference field. And this reference field is going to be author. And in that field, I'm going to reference the author's collection. Now this is important because everything that's in the author's collection is ref you can reference it from within the blog post um, settings. So that means if you want to reference uh, the email address or the photo of the author, you don't have to go in and add individual fields in blog post to do that. You simply would get to that via the author post. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna save that, and that gets author in here. So we're gonna save the collection. Now, the interesting thing is I, I need to go through and attach an author with each of these. And that author that I will attach will be one of the ones that I just created. So let's, let's go ahead and create one for Alan, and we're gonna hit save. I'll come through and do the same. We'll grab the next person down, August. And hit save. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is so that it would show up when we go to when we go to put this on a screen, which is the next thing we're going to do. And you're like, thank God, Chris, because I thought you were just gonna play in databases all day. And just for grins, we'll leave it at halfway done. So only half of our only half of our posts are going to have an author. The rest of our posts will be without. And by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to hop into the uh, ask questions over here in the YouTube um, live chat. I'm, I'm happy to get to those. Um, so away we go. 
let's come let's jump into our pages so right now there's nothing on the home page this is everything's just blank when you put a collection together you will get a collection page and this collection page is really intended to allow you to create a template that will apply that the same design will apply to each item in that collection uh, that this is basically where we create the design for the stories the, the blog posts that were we just we just spun up so to get started on this I'm gonna go ahead and click blog posts and right away I'm presented with just a blank screen so I need to get some elements onto the screen so we can begin to see how it, how it's coming together. To get elements on the screen, you want to click the plus button here, or you can hit A to expand that um, that menu. And now we have elements, and it, you know it starts with big layout elements, section, container, grid, columns. You have your basic elements, div, link, so on, typography elements. This is your collection list. We will use this in a moment, but not right now. N then we have images, uh, video, a YouTube link, form fields, components. I'm gonna uh, immediately grab the nav bar here at the bottom and just drag it in. And right away, it creates a nav bar that will be on every, every template page. Um, and that's fine, nothing wrong with that. We're, I'm gonna go ahead and make that fixed and to, to make that a fixed element on the page, uh, I believe it is right here. It says relative right here. I'm gonna come down to fixed and I'm going to also expand that to be all the way across. And there you are. So now I have a fixed nav bar across the top of these, of these template items. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in some of our structural elements. Now these elements without any content in them will just look like little squares. So I'm gonna drag the section in and as you can see the section is now this little bitty spot right underneath the body, uh, right underneath the nav bar. So there's a nav bar, there's our section right there. Inside of that section, inside of that section, I'm going to place a background image because this is going to be the the lead item for our page and I want something in the background to add a dynamic background updating background which means that this would update dependent on the blog post collection that I have associated with it I'm going to come over here to instead of instead of being on the um, the uh, section uh, decoration panel I guess I'm over here now in the settings and in settings I'm gonna say get background image I will then say I want the main image and as you can see it is now in there although you can't see it very well and that's because right now that that header if you or the nav bar is fixed if I change that back to static it would push down a little bit but because it's fixed it pulls that out of the dom order and our sections right at the top and again this is where this is where working with working with um, HTML and CSS and hand coding things comes in really handy without that knowledge of you like why is my section behind the nav bar you get the idea um, I can also come in and do little things like uh, I've got the nav bar selected and let's pull this navigator out so we can see just how to get into the um, so here's the container that's holding the brand that's holding the nav and here's the menu and you get the idea what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click nav bar and I just want to come back to the background and if I click on this background I can come in and change the opacity right here and you can begin to see through that nav bar I can make it completely clear I can come up and say okay I want the opacity to be at 80 I tend to like 
to have a little color in in that back in that nav bar i'll go ahead and go ahead and make this uh closer to the new pragmatic dark green there you go and i could i could enter the hex code if i wanted to but there we are so i want to come back to my section there's a couple of things that i want to do to expand this photo i do not want to put a particular size on the section like i could i could make this section i could make this section uh tall if i wanted to and i believe the ability to add that height is right here so if i if i said you know hey i want this height to be 1000 pixels boom there it is and it's now i can see the image but i don't want to i i don't want a section to have a specific height because I want it to be, I want it to be responsive to to the content that's within it, and that image is a background image. It's not the main content. So to get to begin building within this section, I'm going to come over and add a container, and I'm going to add that in the section. And if if for some reason like these get out of whack, you can always dr redrag the order which frankly is a lifesaver because I, I don't like the visual placement element. I feel more comfortable over here. I believe that is, that's me wanting to code. That's not, that's me not wanting to deal with, I don't like your WYSIWYG editor. Frankly, so much of this reminds me of Photoshop and I, the moment I got the CSS, I never wanted to touch Photoshop again. So having a WYSIWYG editor is n naturally a bad thing for me. So having this little navigator to where I can, I can drag my elements around, that's helpful. But this over here can be uh, troubling sometimes. So in my container, I want to add our headline. And to do that, I'm gonna come to add elements. I'm gonna come down to heading and I'm gonna drag that in. I, I can actually just drag it directly here. And I, that's what I'm gonna do because I think it's hard to hit that little target. And this is where I'm going to associate the title from the blog post and I should have called it something other than name like headline or title would have been would have been better and the curiosity that I have at the moment is if I come go back to my database and I actually let's come back to blog let's come back to blog post and let's go to settings can I change this to tie to headline and save it what happens Oh, cancel. What happens? Uh, oh, yeah, I've got to save collection. Okay. Now, if I come back to pages and I'm in the blog post template, what happens to that heading? Can I keep dragging it in the wrong spot? I got to come down to the sprocket. Uh, can I get into, yeah, headline? So it updated, and there it is. And right away you see that this is now, it's longer because the headline itself is, is long, the worst advice I've, we've ever heard about web design. Um, but I want this to be responsive to the content that's within it. And typically to do that, I adjust the, uh, the um, margin within the section. So I'm gonna come through and one way that you can do this is hit command and it will drag, oh, actually it's not command, it's, sorry, it's option. Option drag will immediately adjust both sides at the same time. So I'm adjusting the margin and I have it at 185 and that's okay. But I also want, I want this to be even and right now it's not even. I know that this, um, I know that this drop down is about 60. So I'm gonna come back and I'm actually gonna change this 185 to 245. And now this is even between the, the, the end of the nav bar, the top of the headline, the end of the headline and the top of the, uh, or the end of the, the section. So now if I wanna come through and adjust the container, I can do basically that the same way, except this time I'm gonna use uh, padding because the container is set to auto on the sides. There's nothing that's gonna happen there. But I'm gonna adjust the padding of the container and we, we will um, I'll click option to adjust each side. And the problem that I run into right away is, and I'm, I'm just adjusting this to, to show how it will respond to the content. 
um, depending on how many lines is there, it will it will kick down. So that's always important. That's one of the bulletproof li uh, rules of of design for allow the content to push things around. But the other problem I've got is I can't see the damn grid. So I'm gonna turn this on to where I get a better sense of what the grid is that I'm working with. Um, th this is typically, uh, this is where I think the visual assistance of the editor works to your advantage. And right there at 160, that's where we, that's where we, you know, we're two columns in from each side that means it's eight in the middle and you're good to go um, if you want it to preview that i could come up here to preview and that's basically what we're looking at although you can tell that the image here is is not really working because it's not it, it's not responsive so i want to make that that background image responsive let's go ahead and come back to section and in section, this is where I want that main image to be. And let's, this is what, I, I struggled with this a bit yesterday, trying to figure out how to get that image to work for us. Um, so I believe it was here. Yeah, so the, the background image is already in there. And if I wanted to say cover, using cover should, when I switch between uh, views, it should cover to the edge. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch now. And now this image goes all the way to the edge. So that's, that's something that's a little, uh, it's a little tricky. You can't change it over here in the section settings. You have to have that selected and come back and, and put it on the section in the panel here. A um, little tricky to follow that. Um, the other problem here is, and this is quite often uh, the, the case, you can't predict the image that's going to go in the background of a design like this. So you have to, you have to figure out a way to design for that. And, and it, this is one of the, actually one of the great things about Webflow that I've discovered is it has this ability here to show you all the items in the in the collection and you can quickly flip between them and it's taking a minute for that photo to update maybe that was so that photo updated and boy you can tell that's a really bad design uh, let's go for this one that one doesn't work very well either let's go for that one you get the idea so I'm gonna come back let's use this as an example and I'm going to go ahead and click back on the heading. And what I actually probably want to do, I'm going to adjust this heading to give it a background. Um, right now it's got a transparent background. Let's go ahead and give this heading a white background and let's adjust it down. So I'm going to say, put it on a white background with 80% opacity. And now let's adjust that heading to where it has some space to run. So rather than rather than adjusting the margin here, I'm going I'm going to keep this margin at 60 cuz that's I, I definitely want it to start there and maybe in fact I'll switch it to 80. Sorry. 80. So I'm 20 pixels off the top right now. I want to be 20 pixels off the bottom. So I'll say 20 and I keep hitting quick keys by accident because I am fumbly. All right, so now I have a I have a headline that I, I know will show up. I'm gonna go ahead and center it. So I'll come down here and say center. Now I need to adjust the padding. I need to adjust the padding so that it's always gonna be even on all sides. Um, and I also want to flip this around because the container right now is measuring in from the edges. And I actually want to do that with, actually want to do that with the, um, and this is where it gets, see, you can drag out. And, and this is where I should have just used option. All right, so there I've dragged out. So it's 20, 
Um, actually, this isn't 20. There we go. All right, so now it's 20 on all sides. If I want it to really do this properly, I would now say, okay, heading. Um, heading, I want your, I want you to have padding. And that's gonna allow us to give a background for that headline. Um, so I can say padding is 200. And if I want it padding from the sides, I could still do that. Um, in this case, I'll, I'll do padding of one to 150. Actually, let's do 160 just to get a get it lined up with that grid that we had earlier. If there's 160, it it's not lining up right now, but it, if it ever needs to go full width, it could. Um, and now we can come back through and we could take another look at this and go, hey, you know, what? does that need to be 80? Maybe it could be, maybe it could be 100. Maybe it could be. You know, 60, whatever whatever your preference for it is, uh, it's fine by me. I like to be able to see through it a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the grid so you get an idea. Uh, let's go ahead and switch to another page, switch to another page, switch to another page. That's where we were. And you get an idea. You get an idea of how that works. Um, obviously this, the, the problem now is, uh, we've done all this work here. What happens when we get on a phone? When we get on a phone, it's a hot mess. Well, why is it a hot mess? Well, because we've added so much padding to uh, padding and margin and whatnot to the sides of this thing, there's no way that this is going to show up properly. So I'm going to come back through on our heading and, you know, we can save that. I'm just going to pull all of this off. And as much as I would love to tab down, I can't. So here we are, it's basically like that. There is some question of whether you really need this design at all. And that question is fine to ask. I think that uh, one of the ways that I could get, I could talk myself into doing this if I said, hey, I want margin of 10 on each side of this. And then I actually want to, I want to set a condition on this section. Um, this is something I'm curious about. Can I, conditional visibility, uh, element is visible when I'm gonna just save this and see what happens. Okay, so that is hiding the entire element and that's not necessarily what I wanna do. So I'm gonna trash that. Um, I can have div attributes. I can, perhaps I can say none. And does that get rid of it? did not get rid of it for the section here. Maybe it did. Um, maybe I could switch that to a color instead. Maybe the color is just red or black, or maybe there's no color at all. What if, what if that's the, what if that's the jam? What if we just said no color and there is no background image? And I'm curious what that looks like on preview it's just got a X there so that's not that's not really ideal let's go ahead and do section here and let's uh, let's trash that so we've thrown that away and now my curiosity is what happens when we come back over to desktop and desktop okay so desktop it went away if I got rid of the background image, that's not ideal. So there's my background image back for there. It's back here as well. I'm curious if I can just toss it for the section. And I don't see, I don't know if I can. Um, it's probably a conditional. Um, 
I have to have it select it before I can have a condition. It's probably a conditional here that I am not familiar with yet. So if I said, let's see here, main image, main image, element is visible when main image is set. Okay, that's, that's not really helpful. I wanna hide it on mobile. I don't necessarily see a, I wanna hide the background image on mobile. I'm not, I'm not necessarily sure of how to do it. Although I could hack around it and I could ease, just as easily come through and say, okay, and this is a really bad idea by the way. Um, but this is what we do when we're hacking around trying to create on deadline. I'm going to say that this is a measure of 10. This has a measure of zero. Um, this has a measure of uh, 20. And this is a measure of 10. Well, that's, that's not good. Let's go ahead and take that off. You probably picked up on what I'm doing. I'm just I'm just hiding the fact that there's an image back there at all. This is a bad idea because honestly, I don't want the I don't want that loading on the screen at all. Um, but I'm minimizing the wonkiness of it. The the great news is is I maintain this design while holding onto that design. It's writing all the media queries in the background. Uh, so that's helpful. That's helpful. Um, let's go ahead and get some more information on the screen though, because we're, you know, it's already 45 minutes after. Let's go ahead and add another container. Actually, I wanna add a, let's not add that. Let's add a section. So the section's here below. I'm gonna add a container to that section. Um, and now I'm going to add a, um, I'm going to add text here and inside of this text, this is where I'm going to pull in the author. So there's the author. Now nothing is showing up right now. And that's probably because it's one of the five that we didn't have, but here you can see the author text is in there. Now I'm going to also add a, another text field to this and this will be for the date so I'm going to say published on and for some reason that didn't take it's probably because it's not in the section properly so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and adjust that um, Yeah, that, seem, that seems to be, oh, there we are, created on. What, well, you couldn't have a published on date because we have not published these yet. That's that's another uh, another element that we need to, to think about as we're working through. Um, so we have this author and date. If we wanted these things to be separate from the rest of the story, we would come in and add a div and add the div block here drag that element in or again as I like to do a little more often is do that I want this to be inside the container so I've done that and I'm reordering I'm basically reordering how these are working I'm going to go ahead and close these up so I can see right where we're working so there's August and on this container I want this to have a padding of 10 on each side that's obviously uh, that's obviously ideal when you're working with um, when you're working with mobiles. You don't want this stuff to be right on the edge. I could even make an argument that having it 20 from the sides would be fine. Um, by the way, you can also come through and set widths on this, and you can set percentages. Um, I just haven't done that for this particular exercise. Now we've got that div block, and that's fine. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab another div block here and I'm gonna put it right underneath. And this is where we're going to deposit our rich text. So our rich text field goes 
inside of this div. And now that I've, now that I've completely lost that, I'll have to do it again. No. Let's just grab it and put it over here. All right, there's the rich text element. And as you can see, it says, hey, what's a rich text element and all that? That's fine. I want this to connect to the actual post that we have inside of our inside of our story. And there you have the post. You have, um, let's go ahead and preview this. You have the author, you have the date, you have the post. We can come in and style this up obviously um, to be better than this. This is uh, pretty atrocious. But the big thing is we've got the we've got this in and all this information is going to change as you go from one element to the next. Um, and it's all responsive to it's responsive to the content that's changing. The text is is everything is uh, functioning. We come back over here. Obviously, this is a hot mess. This is not a readable width. We want to do something about that. Well, you should have picked up already from this work on the mobile design and is that the changes that we make over here on mobile will not show up on the desktop, which means that we can come through and do something different. And because we've structured this in such a way that we have div blocks, I, I think if this is the opportune time to come in and use grid. Now, grid allows us to come in and begin working with this material and I can begin to say, okay, I have these fractional units for CSS grid. Um, this is all familiar. I am, um, I am always a little uh, perturbed when it comes down to how to add these elements in because I, I know that I know where I want this to be, but it keeps fighting with me. So um, this is this is a, a bit of a frustration with it. Working with CSS Grid and moving the elements around um, is always a bit of a struggle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this container I'm gonna now constrict it because I, I, I want it to have a different size. Um, let's go ahead and add the that padding back in. I'll use option just to, I'll use option just to, to drag it in. Um, if we want it to have our grid back on, there you are. Um, and that is getting closer. I think 160 was our magic number. There we are. So now we've got we've got this. I, w I really want this information, this div. I want this div to show up in the proper spot. I'm going to flip these in order. And for some reason, this div block, this first element is giving me trouble inside of CSS grid. So if I drug this over, it's not, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not allowing me, I like to say columns. Yeah, that's, it's a bit of a, of a struggle. The, um, that's one FR, that's two FR, that's areas. Um, it looks like I could come in and dictate an area as well. I could also just say this is two columns and display these as two columns vertical. I don't necessarily have to get into CSS Grid to to, to make this display happen. Uh, I could just simply say, hey, you know what? This this div block is, um, this div block's gonna be a, a percentage. And let's take a look at how we might go about making that happen. So if I said the min width on this div block was 200 pixels, there you are. 130 and here the situation is I need to put some margin on the top to push this down appropriately and then I could come over here and on this rich di uh, text block I really don't like the way the h2 is functioning 
So um, I, I need to come in and grab this element. So show all settings. Um, if I said I want it the H2. Well, no, it, that's that's adding it. So I need to come in and get this. Um, need to get this this padding off the top of the H2. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. The the big thing that we have here is we have the we we've, we've gone through we've created a collection we've associated the information although that's out of order and that's not what we want either. So we've associated these with content. If we migrate through our content, we get the different designs with different authors, different dates. We flip it over here to mobile. Mobile is now not working because I changed it from grid. If I switch it back to, um, if I switch this container back to regular display, it does that. Now I'm curious of what happens when I come back to desktop. Desktop held. Here's your display for, for mobile. If I flip it back to this, the design holds. And that's what's really important to know that you can go from one design to the next and not have to worry about the media queries that, that come across. There is one other thing I wanted to do in the short time that we have remaining, and that is to show how we, how we work with these collection lists and to, to navigate, because we, we have these posts and that's great, but how will we navigate to the post? To do this, I'm just going to come to our home page and I'm going to come just straight up on the desktop. We have the ability to place a collection, the entirety of the collection on the screen by coming down to the CMS and it says collection list. If I drag that onto the screen, right away you'll see this is, is saying uh, double click if you want it to add the particular collection. I do. I want this to be the blog post. And now we have a representation for all the blog posts that are in our particular collection. Um, if I wanted this to be uh, multiple columns, I could. Um, you know, you can make make this show however many you want. Being that it's ten posts that we're showing, I'm going to make it two columns. Um, I am curious if I can just add padding. Yeah, so I don't have to necessarily add a container here. I can. Um, I'm just going to option click and constrain this. Uh, using margin to two columns. If I wanted to put, come in here and put this in a grid, I suppose I could. I would probably want to make that go all the way out. And let's see, columns, rows. It'd be really great if I could. It'd be really great if I could set here and just say I want five and I want it five and have that wrap um, but I'm not seeing that uh, what if I just said I wanted this to be one and one if I said I want uh, oh that's the grid gap so um, yeah let's go ahead and just say ten what are my options here view height view width yeah I'll just say 10 and 10 and 10 and that's fine I really want to focus on distributing these in a equitable manner should be full width but it's not wrapping um, so that's unfortunate I can switch this just to be up and down I can uh, change this to be two columns um, but I am not completely certain why this is uh, this is operating in that manner seems like seems like I should be able to get these to wrap but I'm not going to worry about uh, grid right at the moment um, although boy, I want to because Grid's one of my favorite things to work with. And what happens if I just get rid of some of these? No, it doesn't work for me. 
So I'm just going to go straight across. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and populate these. And to populate these, all you have to do is to drag in elements. I'm going to start by dragging in what's called a link block because I want these to link specifically to the page that they're associated with. So it says get URL from blog post, and that's fine. That's kind of that's the default. Um, I'm going to close that. I I now need to come back through and um, I want to flip that around. Um, okay, so it's saying that the link block wants to be there. And I really want that to be full width. And now for these collection items, I want to, let's go ahead and bring in, oh, I, I have accidentally exited this and gone to the project setting. So I will have to come back. Let's go to back to the designer, which is, that's helpful to know. It's got to reload the designer now, but we want to populate with all the items that are, that are necessary from each collection, um, list so we've had the wrapper let's go ahead and add in um, let's add in a heading and the heading for each of these is going to be from the headline so one thing you'll notice right away is um, first of all that's a h1 I want like an h3 one thing you'll notice right away is that these are all now blue with an underline uh, that's because it's inside of this link block if I were to add a, let's add a summary to each of these. Uh, so in the link block, I've added a summary. This, these are getting deeper and it's all in blue. Um, what I would need to do to make these adjust is I'm going to add a class here and I'm just gonna say link style. And you could call this really anything. Um, for this, I'm going to change this to black, and then I'm gonna come and erase that underline. I'm gonna say no underline. And that got rid of the link styling. Um, you will notice that when we come over to preview, if I click on this, this should carry me through to, should carry me through to the page, but it is not at the moment. And I think that's because of a mistake I'm, I made here. The URL should not be a pound sign. It should be get URL from uh, none. Would that be oh, choose page? I don't want it to go to the home page. Um, I want it to go to the current blog post. And this is a little bit of a bug. The first time I selected this, I got a different set of options. Uh, then I selected page, and then it came back. And it says choose collect and I say current blog post and that should work. So now when I go back to preview, it's gonna be super wide. When I go back to preview, it takes me to that blog post. When I go back to home, I don't think I've set the home link yet. So if I come up here and I say nav link and I collect, select that nav link, that should be I should be able to get that to go home. But regardless, um, regardless of that, we now have up here on our, in our pages, we now have a list. You can bring more things into that list if you want it to. So for instance, if I want to bring the image, I could do that. So here's our image right now. It's just at the top. Uh, we could say, I want this to be the thumbnail and the thumbnail is pretty big. We could, uh, we could say, Hey, I just want you to, I just want you to wrap. So here's the positioning. We get a float in here right now. It's full width, so it's not going to really do much for us. But if I said, I want it the width to be 30%, now we get that and you can come in and begin adding all sorts of padding and whatnot to this image 
and beginning to space things out. So what I hope you can see uh, re in relatively short order is that it's not hard to come through and put a, put a template together uh, that allows you to drop the content in to then utilize that same template to make mobile versions and desktop versions to put a complete collection together that resides that allows you to get through to the other pages. Um, if you go into preview mode, you can navigate through. But there are some frustrating points where if I if I really just want it to style the H2, I would just I would just add a class and style the H2 in CSS and it would be simple. Um, I don't necessarily see where that could happen here. But if I, if you spend some time with the platform, if you if you learn a little bit more about Webflow, and I'm going to exit out of this uh, really quickly. But come back up here to the dashboard. If you spend some time with this platform and you're working on a project where you're intending to hand it off to somebody else, like you don't necessarily want to be holding the, the client's hand for years and years and years. Um, I think that I think that Webflow is a viable option. No, no, no less so than WordPress, for instance. I think they operate in a very similar space. I do not see it as a excuse to not learn more about front end development and front end design, because I think to do this well, to do this well, you really need to understand the ins and outs of front end design and development because otherwise you're you're going to be const constantly just clicking around clicking around clicking around and hoping that you can pull something up uh, that is useful and in that case I think it might actually take you longer to build something in webflow than in um, than just hand coding it so I think that there's a definite spot for webflow I'm going to keep an eye on it um, can you yeah somebody had a question earlier um, and Nishan, I, I appreciate you asking this. Can I use it to build my portfolio? Um, sure, why not? Uh, I think that I think that there's a couple of things that I'm looking for. If you are a UX designer or you are a visual designer and you are not applying for a front end job, then knock yourself out. Go nuts with the Webflow. If you are applying for a front end position, I think that I want to see what you can actually do when when you're going to sit down to to write write a, a, a front end environment uh, like i i don't necessarily think that that webflow is what i want to see out of somebody who's going to come in and build for clients who aren't using webflow if it's a shop where all they do is webflow fine just use webflow it's great but that's limiting the places where you're going to apply and again if you're a visual designer, if you're a UX designer, and you don't do front-end development at all, I think Webflow is your tool, run with it. If you do front-end development, I would show that you can do front-end development, and I would not lean on Webflow to express that. I think you know enough that you don't need a tool like this. It all comes down to time and place. If I've got a client and I'm spinning up a project, I'm gonna give Webflow a look, absolutely, no question. Um, if it's a if it's a situation where the client has a CMS or they they need a CMS, then Webflow is the option. If the client already has a CMS, for instance, if they have a WordPress CMS and they want to keep it, I don't think this is an option. This is where we get into things like uh, Gatsby. Uh, Gatsby JS, come on. Gatsby JS would allow somebody to build and use WordPress as their CMS, you can pull that down and spit out lightning fast websites on the other side. Um, so Gatsby is an option. Netlify CMS is an option if you need more control. If the client doesn't have a CMS, maybe Wordflow, maybe Webflow is, is a thing for them. So 
time and place for everything. I am definitely not down on Webflow. I think it's it's a tool that you should have. You should know it and be able to work with it in the event that you have a client that it's suited for. You should not throw everything into it. Um, but it's definitely something I think it, that that uh, deserves merit and uh, deserves further study. And that's why we're going to spend a little more time with it. But I will also be spending just as much time with my all-time favorite Gatsby JS right here. So with that, my name is Chris Courtney, New Pragmatic. So take care. Bye-bye.